I know I left this series kind of on the back burner, but I did enjoy making the first episode, so I really wanted to eventually come back and make the second part. This initially had been done a few months ago, like this script has been written, and my cousin had already written his script a while back, but I guess something happened and I just never ended up uploading anything. So today we're going to be going through the third tier of the creepypasta iceberg. If you've never watched an iceberg video before, make sure to check out the first part of the series. And if you don't feel like doing that, then an iceberg chart is pretty much a chart where the top layer or the tip of the iceberg contains the most well known information. And as you dive deeper, you will come across more and more obscure entries until you reach the bottom layer, which has the most obscure or the most disturbing information. With that being said, let's just get right into it. Starting us off in this video is Chatroom98. Uploaded to the Creepypasta wiki in the early 2010s, Chatroom98 is a story about a young boy named David who is suffering from a mental illness and is stuck in a hospital. When in the hospital, he would discover a CD-ROM case that has a disc labeled Chatroom98 and decides to put it into his Dell computer. He types into the chatroom, expecting no response, when a person named Darwin Clark responds, saying good afternoon. David assumes that the other person must not be real, as David would be the only one with the disc. He decides to see what level that the AI would be programmed to. After asking how old Darwin is, he says he was born in 1867, grew up with two sisters that he had despised. Attempting to mess with the AI, David would say that he was born in 2098 with twin brothers from a different planet, and that's when Darwin asks if his brothers had abducted anyone yet. David replies saying that they prey on humans and love CD-ROMs, and that's when Darwin says he was a human once, but faced judgment for his transgressions. He explained his sisters had met a tragic accident before saying he knew David had been lying when he told Darwin that he had brothers who were aliens, calling him by his real name even though David had only given him a fake one. Darwin would lock up the computer, glitching the screen as Darwin asked if David knew what happened to the previous owners of the disc. As David tries to close the chat, his computer says, you have not heard everything yet, before telling David to look behind him. David would turn, seeing nothing, until turning back to see a face on his computer. He passes out. The story ends with David not wanting to live anymore, and jumping out of his window. This story started pretty bad, and it has a decent concept, but as a whole it's like the person had no idea how to end a story or make it really scary at all without using really bad cliches. Because even him just turning around to see someone scary is a lot better than seeing a scary face on your computer. Any 96 Any 96 is a text horror story that was posted on WhatsApp by Pascal Chatterjee in 2014. The story is about a girl named Annie talking to her friend David over text. While doing so, a person dressed as David breaks into her home. It's revealed to be some sort of monster, with the story ending ominously as Annie claims the monster is gone, but David asks for confirmation that it's her typing as she logs off. The story is very popular on YouTube with many short films and YouTubers covering it. The Harbringer Experiment This was uploaded to Creepypasta Wiki in 2014. The Harbringer Experiment is a very, very long story. So I'm just going to use a very, very brief summary. The official purpose of the Harbinger experiment was to test and observe the effects of extended isolation on the human mind. This is what was listed on the reports being sent out at least, but unbeknownst to all of those who were not participating in the project, excluding the subjects, the true purpose was much darker. Happy Happy. Happy Happy was made in 2012 and it's about a spooky TV show that aired on Nick but was quickly taken off. The show is about a talking apple helping children with basic tasks. The story is very long, there's 60 parts and the majority of them are just how the apple kills people. Uh, something to note is that the apple planned and committed 9-11 in the story which is quite hilarious. 
The story is so large that apparently the mods of the Creepypasta wiki took it and moved it to its own wiki that has over 250 pages. Misfortune.gb This was uploaded to the Creepypasta wiki in roughly 2013. Misfortune.gb was an obscure game on the original Game Boy that was said to be one of the most horrifying games ever made. The player controls a young boy in a gothic building, and after exploring for a brief period, the character is confronted by a malevolent being. Despite the character never identifying themselves, it was claimed to be a representation of Baphomet, Beelzebub, or even the devil. When you meet the creature, a dialogue box will appear saying, I exist within the very fabric of reality. Do you wish to challenge me? When the player chooses yes, the reply would be, then let's begin. The player would then be put into a series of maze-like rooms filled with puzzles and traps, the most well-known room having four cabins shown on screen. A dialogue box would appear saying, choose the wrong room and misfortune will befall your loved ones. Are you ready to play? If the player makes a mistake, the screen will cut to black before showing a detailed image of the demon, along with the dialogue box saying, I am God here in bloody writing. It's thought that this creepypasta has inspired some other stories, such as Sonic.exe and Lavender Town Syndrome. Hide and Seek Alone Hide and Seek Alone is a ritual pasta and urban legend originating in Japan, in which a participant summons a ghost to possess a doll and play hide and seek. To perform it, you need a list of items, including a normal sized doll, rice, red twine, a sewing needle, a body part from yourself, like a piece of hair or clip toenail, salt and salt water, a bathtub, and the sharp object smaller, the better. Before you start, you need to turn off all the lights as a doll cannot move while illuminated. You also need to leave the TV on as that's how the ghost will communicate with you. To start, you place the stuffing of the doll with rice in your body part and sew it back with a red string. Then you wrap the string around the doll and put it in the bath water. From there, you look away and count to ten and stab the doll. From then on, the doll will come to life and then chase you with the goal of killing you and taking your body. For you to win, you must spit your salt water in the doll and say I win. God's Mouth Uploaded to creepypasta.com on November 19th, 2010, God's Mouth is a story about a cave called God's Mouth that two people named Margaret and Nathan decide to explore. But as they explore the cave, they realize more and more odd things inside the cave. But when they finally understand what's really going on, it's too late. I Hate You. I Hate You is a Mario creepypasta made by Slime Beast during 2014. It's about the main character downloading a ROM hack of Super Mario World. The hack involves creepy messages being left around the levels before the narrator reaches the final level. The climax of said final level involves jealous Luigi attempting to kill Mario. As he attempts to kill him, he misses and slowly burns in lava, screaming. The creepypasta has a playable ROM hack and a cool picture of half-melted Luigi to go along with the story. Lost Episodes it's kind of a cheap shot for an entry title because that's super broad. I'd imagine there's tons of lost episode creepypastas. And when I looked around, I initially just looked for a creepypasta that was titled Lost Episodes. But obviously there's really nothing. So I'm assuming that this entry is just about lost episode creepypastas as a whole. These lost episode creepypastas pretty much follow a basic storyline of character A get some sort of DVD or VHS that has an episode that was lost or hasn't been seen by the public, usually just from a normal TV show like Spongebob or The Simpsons. They always get these tapes from either a random person on the street or a friend of theirs who just tells them not to watch the episode or talks about the episode being weird. Character A always ignores the advice and decides to watch the episode, seeing something disturbing but uh, always choosing to watch the entire thing for some reason, and usually the story ends with character A being traumatized from the video they watched, the episode of the show, or being murdered by like a character from the show or something freaky like that. On the Bus On the Bus is a creepy pasta made in 2013 where the narrator details how you yourself may become a victim to a mysterious bus in Colombia. As you enter the bus, you become fearful and attempt to leave, but every time you do, it brings you back to your seat. As you attempt to leave again and again, you realize you're now extremely old and withering away, left to be trapped forever. 
Psychosis. This was uploaded to creepypasta.com on November 3rd of 2010. Psychosis is a story about a man named John who is documenting his everyday life after starting to suspect odd things were occurring in his day-to-day -day life. The story is quite long, so that's the most basic description I can give for it. The end of the story is actually pretty good, so I'd definitely check it out if you haven't already. The Pastel Man. The Pastel Man is a creepypasta made in 2014 by Vincent Venacaba. It's about a high school boy whose dad passes away. Later that night, he sees a blue smiling creature who asks if he wants his father back. The creature says he can bring him back in exchange for someone else's life, so the high school boy agrees and picks his school bully to be killed. The pastel man says to do this, the boy must get the bully alone and speak his name. If he does not do this before sunrise, he violated the deal they made, bringing horrible consequences to the boy. Later that night, the murder happens, and there's a time skip. Now, the main character has a son who has just died to a drunk driver. The MC again makes a deal with the pastel man, but this time he decides not to kill the driver. The story concludes with the main character stating that the pastel man was after him, and he had limited time. Ronald McDonald House Uploaded to creepypasta.org on November 7th of 2013, the Ronald McDonald House is a story about a misbehaving kid that was kicked out of his foster home and was sent to the Ronald McDonald House, where everyone there dresses like a clown. But after a very short period, the boy realizes that there's something truly wrong with the place. People laughing maniacally and waving surgical tools in his face, the boy is dragged off to a room with his bag, where he uses some pins that he had kept in his backpack to try to escape. After leaving his room, he walks through the hallways where he finds a set of double doors with a red cross painted across them. When his curiosity gets the best of him, he peeks inside, seeing rows of children in gowns set on crosses attached to the ceiling, having their blood pulled out. He flees, finding a ladder that hopefully leads out into an abandoned part of the town. He yells for help, but nobody responds until he sees the faint light of a McDonald's. He quickly runs over, seeing that apart from the light on the M, the entire building is dark. He looks into the outdoor play place before seeing a familiar figure sitting on a bench, the Ronald McDonald statue. When he walks into the McDonald's through an unlocked door, he sees a laptop. He lets out a laugh, realizing what he was meant to do. He sits next to the statue on the bench, typing out the story while the statue watches over his shoulder laughing. Portraits. Portraits is a short creepypasta posted around April of 2013, with the author being unknown. It's about a hunter who gets lost in the woods. While attempting to find his way out, he stumbles across a cabin that was open. He decides to stay there for the night. As he surveys the home, he notices multiple portraits across the walls, all staring down at him. He then falls asleep. When he wakes up, he finds there is no portraits, just windows. Romanian Knowledge Experiment This was uploaded to the Creepypasta Wiki by JPVL1. The Romanian Knowledge Experiment begins with a scientist who is exploring the forest of Hua Basu in East Romania, which has been said to have had paranormal activity, which is why the scientist chose to explore it. He would write notes about his time in the jungle, which were discovered burnt upon his death. The notes that had survived would detail his experiments on the forest with test subjects, each note ending with Knowledge is harmful, ignorance is bliss. The Romanian government would recreate his experiments after reading the notes that had survived. Three subjects were put into the forest with gear and would write notes, the first two noting a creature was stalking them, becoming physically or psychologically shaken and needing to be put into therapy. The third person only left one note on the porch before never returning back to the shack. His note described the creature as taller than any human or bear, with a hunched body and long limbs fish-like eyes and no pupils. He told them to tell his family that he loved them, as this would be his last words. It would tear down the trees as it wandered in the forest. In the end, the Romanian government placed electrified fences and guard towers around the forest, not letting anyone in or out. Rap Rat Rap Rat is a creepy pasta made in 2012. The story is about a guy who played a cursed VHS video board game that haunts him later in life. The rat in said curse game is cursed by a mom who lost her daughter to a sweatshop that made the dolls for the game. She perts a curse of Apparat onto anything related to the Grap Rat game, leading to the main character being haunted by the game. The picture in the story is actually related to a game with the same name made in the 90s in Australia. Kage Kaya. This was uploaded to DeviantArt on February 5th of 2013. 
Kage Kayo is a demonic trickster that appears in the creepypasta by the same name. He's described as a 21-year-old demon that lives in America, but was initially born in Japan. When he was a young man, he was separated from his parents and had to move to America at the age of 18. He is described as a 5'4", gray-skinned male with short fluffy black hair and silver eyes that glow based on his mood. He always kept his face covered by his mask so very few people knows what he actually looks like. The original story features a man named Mark, who is walking around on his roof when he accidentally knocks an empty box off it and lands on a person's head. He looks over, apologizing profusely when he sees the person is wearing an odd mask. Mark freezes, and when the man begins to climb the side of the building like a lizard, Mark would look deeper. He notices that the man was wearing gloves with long claws extending from the tips of the fingers. When the person reaches the roof, it looks at Mark, before the mask changes from a frown into a happy face with a smile. The person cocks his head to the side before asking if Mark wants to play. Rugrats Theory Rugrats Theory states that every baby and Rugrats are just figments of Angelica's imagination. The theory gives reasons for why all the babies have passed and Rugrats grown up. The explanation as to why the babies are still in the show is because Angelica is a drug addict and a schizophrenic. It's not a very good theory and it has a lot of shock value. The Holders a compilation of stories that involve someone collecting some of the 538 random items that should never be collected together. I do give props to the person that would write 538 stories for all of these things, but I am definitely not going to sit through and read all of them because the stories just seem kind of mediocre. It's a lot of effort in, you know, writing all of that, but it just doesn't seem like the content is very good. Stairs. Stairs is a 2012 short story where a detective shows up to a homicide scene of a caretaker with her throat ripped out downstairs. The only person at the crime scene was a frail old lady in a wheelchair whose husband had recently died. The old woman gleamed at the detectives from atop the staircase and was ruled out due to an inability to travel downstairs. The detective shirts upstairs to find a lack of a phone. In a panic, he draws his gun and returns to the old lady, only to find an empty wheelchair. Pale Luna Uploaded to the Creepypasta Wiki on August 6, 2011, Pale Luna is a video game said to be a text adventure game in the vein of Zork and Lurking Horror. This was created when the genre was going out of fashion. When the player would launch the game, they would be greeted with a blank screen other than some text saying, you're in a dark room with the moonlight shining through the window. In the corner is some gold, as well as a shovel and some rope. To the east, there is a door. From then, you would be given a few options of picking up some of the items in the room or opening the door and going east. When you leave the room, going east, you are quickly put into a forest with some paths to the north, west, and east. Most who play the game would be aggravated with the buggy and confusing nature of the second screen onwards, only one of the directions actually leading somewhere with the others causing the game to freeze, forcing the player to reset their computer. When you attempt to use the gold, it says, not here. Trying to use the shovel will say, not now, and using the rope would say that you had already used it. One person named Michael had attempted to see if he could take it further than anyone else who would give up on the game after consistently crashing and leading nowhere. Michael was able to figure out the game display different text. The game saying, pale Luna smiles wide. There are no paths, pale Luna smiles wide, the ground is soft, pale luna smiles wide, here, and the prompt commands again, and the command prompt again. It was an hour later, Michael figured out that the commands to progress again would be digging a hole, dropping the gold, and filling the hole. The game would finally say congratulations and give him coordinates. A few days later, he would follow the coordinates, stumbling upon a patch of uneven dirt before shoveling excitedly but he would become mortified when he discovered a badly decomposing head of a blonde-haired girl. He reported it to the police where they would attempt to track down the developers of Pale Luna, or the rest of the body, but they were never able to find either one. The Showers The Showers is a creepypasta made in 2012, uploaded to Reddit No Sleep. The story is very long, about two and a half hours read, and it has its own book. The story is about a guy named Jack who wants to investigate a mysterious shower place he heard from his teacher's Halloween stories. After high school, he goes on a road trip to find it. 
From there, the story dives into the horrors of what he finds. The creepypasta is very good, and I do recommend you listen to a narration or read it. The Quiet Sky Uploaded to creepypasta.com on December 7th of 2016, The Quiet Sky follows a narrator stating that humans were always so invested in figuring out about other life in the universe, always yelling into the darkness and into the void, hoping that we wouldn't be all alone in vast space. But the sky has always been so quiet, and as time progressed, we continued to send out calls into every corner of space, years after years, decades after decades, refusing to believe that we were all alone. But one day, we realized that something had changed. The first message was responded to in 1974, when we picked up a static interference that continued for over an hour, consisting of unintelligible screeching and buzzing noises. We couldn't understand it, but we knew where the origin of the sound came from. But quickly, the signal stopped and the real message began. We were asked the question, who is there? It didn't come from radios or televisions. It was through a direct voice in our heads. Everyone on Earth had heard it. Even those who were deaf had heard it. Then asked, where are you? And before long, everything would go wrong. Groaning and moaning coming from the ground below as if everything had died in the past would come back and scream and groan in their graves. Cries shaking the ground and seas. Shrill screeching of birds echoing in the forest and caskets shaking while morgues howled. Then all of the voices stopped. Before the voice in everyone's head had returned. I hear you, it said, coming as a whisper. And I am coming. The screaming dead was only the first of the side effects we felt as the voice appeared. And as the voice got closer, the worse things got. Seeing stars bleed as the skies turned black, darker than the night. Stars turning red as the black void moved closer every night. And with each day, a new hell would appear. Animals vanishing, television stopping as satellites are knocked from the sky. And the rainfall becoming salty and filthy, turning grass black. The clouds blackened, darkening, blackening out the sun, leaving darkness over the earth for days. And when the clouds left, the skies were empty, and if the sun were in the sky, it would never show itself, each day turning darker and darker until night and day were the same. Creatures began appearing on earth, and then there was nothing left for humans to do except for pray, and on the final day, all places of faith would be destroyed. People begged for God's help, but he would do nothing. The final message came from the sky. I am here darkness on the horizon like nothing we had ever seen before, and the screams of countless souls is all that could be heard. The Wanderer The Wanderer is a creepypasta uploaded in 2010 about a girl named Jane who commits suicide. She does this after seeing an image named The Wanderer, which mentally torments her in her dreams. She claims she sees it constantly while asleep, which makes her stay up and eventually leads to her committing suicide. The story concludes with the author researching about the image getting a grim email that may or may not be the cursed image. Ichbar Biggelstein Uploaded to creepypasta.com on September 19, 2012. Ichbar Biggelstein follows a man recounting his childhood fear of the dark. His inability to sleep in the dark without bursting out into tears and begging his parents to search his room and make sure there were no monsters that were there to eat him. His parents would attempt to console him, saying that there were no ghosts or monsters and every time he thought he saw them, it was just bad dreams. Eventually, after a particularly bad night, his parents had enough. His mother decided to stitch him together a bedtime plush using random fabrics for him. Later, he would call it Mr. Ichbar Biggelstein, or Ick for short. Ick would protect him each night while he slept by scaring away all the other monsters. Ick had the stitched look together of Frankenstein as a gremlin with big white button eyes and floppy cat ears. He had a big set of white, sharp teeth. From the day he got him onward, Ick would never leave his side. Ick would tell him where the monsters were, and he would put him in the area to keep them away. Sometimes monsters would come into his dreams, and Ick would come into his dreams to protect him. In his dreams, Ick would talk to him for real, saying how much the narrator loved him, always responding that it was more than anything. After the narrator would lose his first tooth, Ick would ask him for it, saying that he would use it to kill monsters. It would always thank him, saying he loved him. Eventually, the narrator would run out of baby teeth and grew out of having dolls, so he would place Ick on the bookshelf and he began to collect dust. After a while, the narrator's nightmares would return, worse than ever before, eventually becoming something that would affect him when he was awake. 
After an encounter with a pack of rabid dogs, he returned home to see Ick standing fully upright on his bed. The narrator would flick the lights on and off to see if he was seeing things, but Ick was always just standing there watching. When he tried to leave, the door would slam shut, locking him in the room. Ick would ask why he should protect him when he stopped feeding him. The narrator asked what is he protecting him from, before he was shown some of his worst nightmares, agonizing scenes and horrifying imagery flashing as he stood in a forest. Ick explained that this would be his reality without him, and if the narrator would just feed him again, he would keep him safe forever. From then on, the narrator was willing to do anything to get the teeth he needs in order to make his world from becoming a nightmare. This man, this man is an internet myth where people have claimed to see this man. The story is that a psychiatrist had a patient who drew the face of this man who he saw in his dreams. Later, a different patient claims to have seen the same man in his dreams as well. The thing that really pushed it to popularity was the creation of the This Man website which gave reasons as to who or what the image was. Most likely, the image and the website associated with it is a hoax. So we've reached one of my least favorite creepypastas that I've read for this video. The name is Liars, which was uploaded to creepypasta.com on July 4th of 2012. Um, unlike the last two stories I read, which I actually really liked reading, this one really sucks if I'm being honest. It follows a boy named Jimmy who would just make jokes and generally was seen as a class clown. One day he called some kids mama milf so him and some other kids decide to corner him in the science room and pour acid on him because okay I guess. They laugh about it and leave. First of all is he going to the school for the league of fucking villains? What is going on here? What kind of children is like, oh yeah, your your mom's so bad. Well, now that you said that, I guess I could pour acid on you with my friends. What? That's that's insane. Just because some kid said something you don't like to you, you're just gonna like disfigure him forever. The children would then make up stories about how it was Jimmy's fault that he is severely disfigured from the acid that had went on him. Uh, but Jimmy couldn't do anything about it because he was so disfigured that he couldn't really talk. Eventually, he was discharged from the hospital, having suffered life-changing, unfixable damages to his face, which I guess this was a time before there were CCTV cameras in schools, so whatever, I guess. Uh, and he decided to get his revenge on the people that ruined his life. So he waited for the group to separate after school, and he attached, he attacked each one as they walked home alone. That weekend, the head bully would receive a VHS tape in the mail with the label being for you etched into the front. Because yeah, of course I would read, you know, I'm, I'm picking up this tape and I'm immediately putting it in my fucking VHS player instead of, you know, calling the police that someone, you know, did some freaky shit like that to me. I, I guess I wouldn't call the police, I just would throw it away probably, I didn't want to watch that. Uh, the videos would then show these crudely recorded home videos that started by showing a date on the newspaper, which was the day before the head bully had received the tape. It then panned to a basement with a single flickering light bulb hanging above because, you know, of course, every single basement in the world has to be horribly awful. Um, this showed one of his friends, which was on his hands and knees as he was begging with a dirty blindfold on his face to go home. He was covered in blood and had horrific wounds and burns on him, and one large pile in the, a uh, one large wound in his back that looked like a wart. When the cameraman removed the gag from the boy's mouth, uh, he begged to let go, profusely apologizing, saying that he had done what the cameraman wanted him to do by killing all of his friends. In the background, there was plenty of the mangled, burned corpses of all of the main bully's friends, causing the main bully to feel the bile rise in his throat. Uh, this would probably be the point where any normal human would call the police or at least stop watching one or the other. Hopefully both um, because don't know. The cameraman then gave the camera to the boy who was whimpering and shivering as he pointed the camera at trees in the distance now that he was outside and you could hear footsteps drawing closer in the camera. The boy would scream and cry, saying that the cameraman had told him that he would be allowed to leave before the crunching of snow got close from every angle and stopped. 
He then turns and sees Jimmy's mangled face before a howl blares through the speakers and the word liars appears and the tape abruptly stops. Because I guess that is what's going on. Brett immediately runs to lock the door before he hits something and falls backward. The last thing he hears is as well as acid runs down his face is liars. Because of course man. Of course, every shitty story that has all of these unbelievable events in it. I'm, I'm not saying that you have to write a creepypasta to be realistic because, like I said, the last two were good and they weren't realistic. It's just, this is just so, like, it's so corny and bad. It just, I, I don't want to tear it apart because obviously someone wrote this and they, are, I'm assuming, were at least slightly proud of it when they made it. But either it has just had really poor aging or people were a lot more accepting of mediocrity back then. <laughs> But this is, I guess this was almost 11 years ago now. Jesus, man. The only good part I can give credit to about this story is the photo that accompanies it. Because, I mean, it's cool. But it's also not really anything that special. It's just kind of a spooky picture that you would see. I'm pretty sure uh, it turns out it's from like a music video or something. But whatever. The flaws in the story are just so large for me that it just like really tosses it out for me because why are children allowed into like a science class alone that has just deadly acid sitting out in the open where anyone can get it where, where are the teachers what is going on here I, I get it could be after class or something but also don't like follow this asshole in here but even then, it's like, what, even a normal, like, asshole bully, like, you know, I'm about to steal your lunch money, chump. Who is, there, none of these people are going to pour acid on someone because they said something mean to me. That just, uh, that, that, that's not real. Like, I, I have heard of acid attacks before, which is, I'm assuming, why that they probably made this. But acid attacks are so uncommon that it's, like, crazy. And 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not done by these fucking, like, children in school that said something mean to each other. So, I, I, it's just, it could have been, he just kicked the shit out of him or something. Or they, like, jumped him in the woods and they hurt him really bad. And then he was like, okay, I want to take revenge. That would be a much more believable thing than having them pour fucking acid on him. And none of the children, or none of the adults in the town you know, gave a second thought of it. It's like, man, this kid's a bully and him and his little friends, you know, are the only people that know what happened to this singular child. Man, that's so crazy. I, I'm so glad we don't have CCTV cameras anywhere on this school, you know, to make sure that something bad doesn't happen. Well, I guess he must have done it himself. Whatever. Told it. A tulpa is more of a thought experiment than an actual creepypasta. That being said, it's the idea that people can make their own object or entity through mental power alone. This entity can act independently of his creator and is like another thing or person by itself. Happy Sun Daycare. So this was uploaded to the creepypasta wiki on the 26th of January 2014. February 2014, sorry. The story is pretty long, and usually uh, for a lot of the entries, I would summarize them only in liars that I really go into anything about my opinion. But I'm also going to give my opinion on this one, uh, just because generally I think the story is pretty good, but it's also kind of like lacking. The writing style is pretty sweet, with the narrator being a journalist who is interviewing old employees that went to a daycare. But when you like read into the story, it really just kind of falls flat and it lacks a lot of horror or even creepiness in it. It has a major lack of reality with no parents in their right mind sending their children to this daycare and having their kids return to them like they were being chewed on like a foam football. Uh, they have these insane scratches and bruising all over them. And I guess nobody just really gave a shit. I couldn't imagine this place not being shut down day one in reality because the moment my kid comes home and he just got a chunk bitten out of him, yeah, that, that place is not ever going to fucking allow any other children in it, ever. And I know realism isn't supposed to be a huge thing for creepypastas, but it just feels like I can really accept it for certain things, but it's just so major 
that it, it really just kind of took me out of it because how do you avoid that like that's just so unrealistic i do appreciate that the story doesn't choose to go the cliche way of just murdering children for the sake of being like edgy and scary but even then the story just isn't that scary and the characters that are interviewed by the journalist are really lacking and they just kind of repeat what the other ones said you could remove two-thirds of the interviews and the story wouldn't really be different at all i do like the fact that the scary creature is a werewolf instead of some like freaky random creature or something stupid like in the liar story where it's some kid that got acid poured on him but overall the story is just eh but I would still say it's pretty decent. Where the Bad Kids Go. Where the Bad Kids Go is about an author reminiscing on a show he used to watch while he was a kid. The show ended always with panning to a door that emanated screams. As the show concluded, this is where the bad kids go. 15 years later, he finds the dilapidated studio that the channel used to produce shows. He finds a room and in it there are tiny bone pieces and blood. What really scared him was a caged mic in the center of the room. If you've made it this far in the video, I really want to thank you a lot. I appreciate it every time. And if you aren't subscribed already, make sure to do so as I have a lot more content coming in the future. This video hits 40 likes. I'd like to continue the serial killer iceberg as that was another one that I had left behind. As always, stay safe out there. Love you all and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.